All right, so welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to give you my opinion on the four planes that I showed you guys in the Battle of the Fours video. If you haven't watched that video, I'm gonna highly recommend watching it because it goes through all the different statistics for the planes and things that I'm not gonna cover in this video. So go watch that and then come back to this one. Now, I the only reason I'm doing this video is because people asked, they watched that video and they said, okay, but we want to know your opinion. Normally, I don't like to. I like to just give you guys the information and let you decide from there, but they had some valid points. So some of their points were, you're the one testing the planes, you're the one that has them in your hand, you're the one using them. So your opinion has value to us. So I said, all right, you know, I'll make a video for you guys. <laughs> so here I am, and I've recorded this so many different times that I'm just going to let it go. Whatever happens, happens. Um, I don't know that I've done a video like this before, and I'm still, again, I'm still new at YouTube. It's only been since December of last year, so we're going for it. So the categories I'm not going to cover, I'm not gonna cover any, any of the statistics. That's in the Battle of the Fours video. I'm not gonna cover iron types, so I'm not gonna, we, we have four different types for these planes. Each one of them has a different one. A2, PMV11, O1, and then cryogenic, whatever, O1. I'm not gonna go over all that. That could be a video in and of itself, I believe that all of the metals are good. All of them have a place in my shop for different tasks, but I'm not diving into it. The categories that I will cover. So I'm going to talk about comfort. I'm going to talk about weight. I'm going to talk about style. And then I'm also going to talk about the Norris versus the traditional style plane or the Bailey style um, adjustment. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about what my decision would be if money wasn't an issue. If I could pick any plane, technically it's not just one, which we'll get into that what would my choice be? So let's dive right in. For comfort, I have to go with the Veritas because you can pick the tote and the knob for your hand size. So my hand size is three and a half, excuse me, three and an eighth across. So if you want to, when you're listening to this video, check your hand size and see how close it is. That might help you out a little bit. So Veritas sells six different types of totes and three different knobs. The other companies don't. Now they are wooden, so you can modify any of the totes if you want to. I know that hurts resale, like please, if you get a vintage Clifton, the, the Clico, please don't. Please don't modify that one. Buy a different one and modify that one. Save the original tote. I'm just, just helping you out for resale, okay? <laughs> but anyways, it's not really fair because the Veritas offers more totes. So of course that one's gonna be more comfortable because it's for your hand size and it's also for your preference on how you hold that front knob. But I will talk about the other ones. The Vintage Clifton, the green one, is very close to the Veritas. So I don't have much to say on that one other than it's it's close to the medium traditional style tote and the standard knob that Veritas offers. The modern Clifton, the sides are flat. And I don't like that at all. They're, they're flat on the sides and I like when it's a little bit more rounded, it's a little bit more natural to hold. The Veritas tote, or excuse me, the, the Lee Nielsen tote's just too small. I know you're supposed to plane with a finger out. I don't, I grab the full grip, but when I use the Lee Nielsen, you have to put your finger out or you're cramped and you're messing your hand up. But even with a finger out on the Lee Nielsen tote, and again, not having big hands, I feel like my pinky gets smushed. So I end up feeling like I have to do a rock on symbol and I don't know if that's normal or not. Um, I used to, all of my users used to be Lee Nielsen's and I found myself doing that and it ended up hurting everything in here. So, Guys with big hands, girls with big hands too, sorry. Um, how do you hold a Lee Nielsen tote with it being so small in the shape that it is? Because it's got a, a really forward lean. When it comes to weight, I like the Veritas because I'm an arm planer. Let me explain what I mean. You guys may have never, never have heard this before. Arm planing is when you pretty much plant your feet and move your arms. Okay, and you plane like this. If you're doing long boards, obviously you can't do that. You're going to have to walk with it. But... I don't build big projects, so most of the time I'm just moving my arms. And the heavier planes like the Lee Nielsen and the Clifton, the modern Clifton, are just too heavy for that. It gets very laborious for your arms. It's a workout. If you are a body planer, meaning you, you move your entire body while you're planing, Lee Nielsen and Clifton will be just fine because that weight's going to help you out. You're, you're moving with it, so it's not going to get laborious on your body. The other thing is depending on how you plane and for different tasks of planing, there's a difference in these planes. If you need to focus on a high spot and you're going back and forth really fast, I know you guys have seen people playing like that before, Lee Nielsen Clifton, modern Clifton are gonna be your winners because that weight helps you in that action. 
If you are taking some finishing passes, normally there are longer strokes and a lighter plane is gonna help you in that process. Um, again, these are probably things that you've never heard. These are things that I've noticed for my experience in woodworking and what I do. Style. <laughs> the only reason, the only reason I'm including style is because people ask me, how can you even look at the Veritas? They're ugly. I like it. I like modern looking planes. I like modern looking things. Even my house, I like modern, the shape of modern. Now, if we're going vintage, I like old, like bedrock. You know what I mean? But the Lee Nielsen, don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful plane. I just prefer the look of the Veritas, the style. And this category is 100% preference. Everybody else is going to have a different opinion on that. Now, when it comes to Norris style versus traditional, I like Norris only on the custom. When I first started woodworking, I had the Veritas standard planes. And I wasn't a big fan. I'm not going to get into that. I wasn't a big fan. Mainly because of the Norris style adjuster and yada yada. So then I switched all of my users over to Lee Nielsen. And I, the traditional works just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And then I tried the Veritas Custom and I was hooked on that one. That has become my favorite plane in the shop. A lot of people say that when you... They're worried or they found that when they adjust the depth of a Norris, it knocks it out of square. If that's happening to you, there's either an issue with your Norris adjuster or your cap's not tight enough. Because for the custom, when I adjust depth, it doesn't move left or right at all. That is so taut in there that most of the time I have to grab a hammer and tap it to adjust the lateral. So just keep that in mind. Don't let that deter you. If you have an opportunity to try out a Norris, try it on a custom. I have never tried an infill Norris, so I don't... The Norris adjuster normally comes from infill planes, I believe. Don't yell at me. I haven't tried one on there. So yeah, that's also going to be preference. Um, <laughs> both of them operate just fine. Both of them can be adjusted just fine. Both of them can be adjusted on the fly. Kind of. I guess I would say the lateral on the Veritas might not be on the fly because it is so taut and you have to tap it with a hammer a little bit. Okay, now... <laughs> If I, if money wasn't an issue and I could pick whatever plane or planes or whatever that I want, if I could only pick one, I would go with the modern Clifton, but then I would go to Lee Nielsen and I would get an A2 iron and then I would go to Veritas and I would get their toad in their knob. So that would obviously become a very expensive plane, but I don't like the toad in the knob on the modern Clifton. So I would get the Veritas toad in the knob so they fit my hand size. I'm not a big fan of O1s for planes, and I'm not getting into that category again, but I love the A2 steel of the Lee Nielsen. I don't know what it is about it, but it's really easy to sharpen. Some people aren't fans of A2 because it's difficult to sharpen, but there's something about theirs. Like my chisels are Lee Nielsen, and they're, they're phenomenal chisels. I, I started talking about metal types. I apologize. But that's what I would pick. Modern Clifton, Lee Nielsen iron, Veritas tote in the knob. If I could pick two planes, I would pick the Veritas and the modern Clifton. The Lee Nielsen is just too heavy for me and I don't like the tote shape. The Veritas I would pick when I was doing longer strokes, longer finishing strokes because it's a lighter plane. The modern Clifton I would grab when I needed to focus on a high spot and go back and forth really fast. My personal setup right now, because the two, the Lee Nielsen and the modern Clifton, my buddy Lewis sent them to me. He's a subscriber of the channel and a patron. Lou, shout out. Thank you. I appreciate you because this has been, obviously I'm geeking out about this. Thank you. Um, my personal setup right now is I have the vintage Clifton with a 45 degree frog and then I have the Veritas with a 55 degree frog. I am going to do a separate video that talks about the different frog angles, different angles of the blades, all those different things, low angle, high angle, blah, 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 to explain their purpose and why I have that set up. And then I also, Lou also sent me two different frogs for the Lee Nielsen. So I have a 55, a 45, and then for the Veritas, 55 and 45. And we'll do a video on those too, because maybe a higher angle, the weight of the Lee Nielsen is better or vice versa or whatever. So we'll do that as well. But that's all I had for this. Um, hopefully that helped you guys out a little bit. Hopefully it helped you make a decision. I personally believe you'll be happy with any plane in this lineup that you pick if you're okay with Norris. If you've tried a, Nor a Norris Custom, if you've tried the Custom Norris before and you don't like it, there's your answer. <clears throat> um, 
If you haven't tried it, go for it. The only, the last thing I guess I'll say about the Veritas is I still haven't figured out um, why it doesn't eject the shavings and why you have to manually eject the shavings every time. I talk about that a little bit in the Battle of the Fours. A few guys have told me that it could be because of the angle of the chip breaker, that I need to increase that angle a little bit, or excuse me, yeah. Other people have said that it could be because the cap is so big. And then finally, I've heard few people say that it's the uh, um, the thumb screw for the mouth or the stop screw for the mouth. What I would like to do is get a camera in there to really see. Like, I don't have the best recording equipment, so I'm hoping maybe somebody like Wood by Wright can hook up his camera somehow and show the shavings going through the Veritas plane so we can figure out what's happening here. I guess I will add on. If you decide that you want to start hunting down a vintage Clifton, be careful because the bottom might not be flat. The steel that they used back then, the gray cast iron is very thin, so there's a very high chance it's going to be out of flat, and you're going to have to work on that. Again, that's like any other vintage plane, but just know if you're spending between $300 and $350 for that vintage plane, you're going to have to put some work into it. And then I still recommend replacing the iron with um, A2 PMV11, your choice on that. The last thing I want to add, you watched this video and this video was my personal opinion. Go watch more. Go watch other videos. Any videos that look at the Veritas, the Leniosin, and the Cliftons together, separately, whatever, go watch them too because it's the best thing that you can do for yourself. You heard my opinion. Go hear their opinions and form your own. And that's what you should do across the board. I mean, even if you're just cutting dovetails, if you want to learn how to cut dovetails, go watch 10 videos on how to do it and then form your own process because there's a million ways to do the same jointry, okay? For example, my buddy Eric Richter just started a YouTube channel and he posted a video on how to do dovetails and he did things in that video I've never seen before and things that I want to try now to see if I like them, if I'm going to use that process. All I'm trying to say is the best thing, again, the best thing you can do for yourself Get multiple opinions and form your own. All right. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, let us know down below. I hope to see you at Handworks. It's coming up in a couple weeks and I'm super excited. All right. Have a good evening. <laughs>